My friends, welcome, welcome to another uh, clip from the Rabbi Shmuel Show, and we are so honored today that we are speaking with David Matis, a world-renowned attorney, author of many, many important books, and recently nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Can you tell us a little bit about that, David? Sure. Uh, I was nominated by a, a member of parliament from uh, Canada, Boris Rizuski. Uh, along Boris with who? Rizuski. A uh, Jewish member? Uh, no. Uh, uh, along with uh, David Kilgore, we, we were both nominated. And, and uh, the nomination was supported by the Hebrew Writers uh, Union of uh, Israel. And uh, it was largely because of our work in uh, in uh, working on uh, the issue of uh, the persecution of Falun Gong, the killing of Falun Gong for their organs, which, which is a, a, an issue which we started working on in 2006 and we've been working on uh, for the last uh, four years. And it's the reason why I'm here in Washington today. Um, um, I'm part of a, a panel discussion, a congressional briefing tomorrow, and then we're doing a launch of that book, Bloody Harvest, tomorrow at the Georgetown University Bookstore. Well, we're going to... Um we're going to talk a little bit more about the Falun Gong and Bloody Harvest, but first I have to ask you, uh, nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, it used to mean something. Now, you know, it would mean you'd have to share an award that Yasser Arafat has won. I mean, wouldn't that, uh, that would give you an opportunity to speak out against him, perhaps, it, when you win? Well, I, I mean, if, if I win the Nobel Peace Prize, it doesn't mean I've become Yasser Arafat. God forbid, God forbid, <laughs> but he cheapened it, he cheapened it. And also, I have a gripe or two against Jimmy Carter. I mean, I'm not so impressed with him either. But we'll get back to that. Uh, God willing, when you win, uh, it will be a great testament to the amount of work you've done. And perhaps will give us an opportunity to say, since David has won, uh, maybe take it away from Arafat. You know, no person, I think, since Hitler is responsible for the death of more Jews than Yasser Arafat. And Arafat, the fact that he won the Peace Prize, to me, still to this day, just turns my stomach. But we'll get back to that. First, let's speak about the killing of the Falun Gong for their organs. Maybe tell our audience who, who are the Falun Gong and what's going on with their organs. Well, the Falun Gong is a set of exercises. Uh, the, the people are the people who practice these exercises, uh, the practitioners of Falun Gong. And the, uh, it's, it's a set of exercises with a spiritual foundation. Uh, started in 92... Living in China. Well, it started in China, uh, but it's no longer just a Chinese phenomenon. Uh, David Kilgore and I, for the purpose of uh, talking about our research, have traveled around the world and met the uh, Falun Gong practitioner communities everywhere. And uh, now uh, it's, it's an international phenomenon. In Israel, the Falun Gong practitioners are Jewish, Israeli, and Mexico. They're so it's Mexicans. A, it's a type of, we can't call it a religion, but it's a way of life. It's a way of well, life. it's 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 a, it's a set of exercises with a spiritual foundation, and a spiritual foundation is a modern updating and blending of the ancient Chinese traditions of Taoism, Buddhism, and the Qigong, well, the exercise traditions. So, so what, who's killing them, and who's and why are they taking their organs? Is this the Chinese government doing it? Uh, it, it and it, why? It, 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 well. I, th there's a huge demand for organs for transplants and a lot of money to be made by hospitals. Uh, Who's buying this. the organs? Well, when we started our work, uh, the primary uh, purchasers were foreign transplant tourists, uh, some Americans, uh, but mostly people in the neighboring countries, Koreans, uh, Japanese, uh, Indonesians, uh, Taiwanese. Uh, so you're alleging, I just want to make clear about yeah. this, that the Chinese government is intentionally killing the Falun, innocent Falun Gong people and then taking their organs and selling them uh, to people who are in need of organs. Hmm. That's what you're alleging. Do you have concrete ev evidence? I'm sure you must. What, what is your evidence? Can we send people to a link on a website? Buy the book, you're saying? Well, uh, that book is the third version of our report. Uh, the first two versions of our report are, are indeed on a website, organharvestinvestigation.net. Uh, the, the first version of the report was done uh, on uh, July 2000 and, 
2006. The second version was January 2007. And the book came out in November 2009. And with each version, we accumulate more and more well, evidence. How many people do you think have been killed so far for their organs? China doesn't publish statistics like that. Right. Uh, so uh, we're, we're left to estimate. And, and, and the way we estimate is, is by looking at total volume of organ transplants and subtract from that the, the number of people who are uh, sentenced to death and then executed. Because the people sentenced to death and then executed are the only other major source of organs in China. There's no, until August of last year, there was no organ donation system. And it was set up in August of last year as a pilot project in 10 cities. There's still no law allowing for the organ sourcing from brain dead, cardiac alive, the accident victims. So basically, you're dealing with prisoners, and the only other prisoners are the prisoners sentenced to death and then executed. And China doesn't even publish statistics about uh, death penalties. So we're left to get that statistic. What's your best guess? Well, uh, my, uh, my guess, it looks as if China is, is doing transplants at the rate of about 10,000 a year, and about 2,500 a year are coming from prisoners sentenced to death, and about 7,500 are coming from uh, Falun Gong practitioners. So 7,500 Falun Gong killed a year and their organs being used, and the Falun Gong are just being killed because... They, they're being declared enemies of the state? I mean, what's the pretext for killing them? Uh, the, the Falun Gong have been banned, uh, it, it, and, and they are expected to recant. Uh, and, and if they do recant, they're released. But if, if they don't, they're just kept in prison uh, indefinitely. And they become this huge organ donor bank within the Chinese prisons. So what's being done? Is there anything being done in the United States or Canada within the government uh, about this? Has Barack Obama spoken about this? Um, uh, I would say that uh, there's been some, uh, in the United States, there's been some congressional representatives who have spoken about it. In fact, if you look at the back of our book, one of the blurbs is from Dana Rohrbacher, who's, who's an American congressman. And, and then there's been other, there's been a resolution actually that was uh, recently passed through Congress to decrying the persecution of Falun Gong. And, Harvesting of their uh, organs, and, specifically? And, well, in, in the resolution itself, that wasn't mentioned, but if you look at the media around the resolution, there was mention of that from some of the uh, congressional what representatives. A, what about the State Department and the President? The State Department, well, I've, uh, 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 David Kilmer and I have talked with the State Department and also with foreign affairs departments in a number of different countries, and, and what they tell us is they raise this issue in, in dialogue with the Chinese, but of course, the Chinese government denies it and continues to criticize the Falun Gong. So, well, it's how did you find out about it? Through our research. Uh, I mean, originally, what had happened, the way we got started, was that a woman who uses the pseudonym Annie, who was the ex-wife of a surgeon in China, said that her ex-husband, between 2003 and 2005, in Sujiat in China, had been harvesting the corneas of Falun Gong practitioners. Uh, wow. And the Chinese government denied it. So then David Kilgore and I were asked to investigate whether what Annie said was true or not. So that's how we got started. So these are, ve uh, just to conclude this point, because uh, this is shocking to me, but you believe that uh, this, these allegations are extremely serious. Yeah. Uh, you believe these allegations with all your heart. Well, I believe it to be true, yeah. Yes. Because, I mean, this is, we did the research. But, but just how can you, anybody out there, hear these allegations and not be shaken to the core that there is a government, that the prime minister of it, the premier of it, comes and meets with the president of the United States, gives him a hug, and at the same time, they are taking innocent people and harvesting their organs. This is such a shocking, unbelievable, but it is believable because you're sitting here today, a man of incredible integrity and reputation, and uh, you are saying to people, now the responsibility is on us, because now that we know about it, we have to get involved. We should raise this issue um, with our elected officials. We should raise this issue with the State Department and with the President of the United States. And, of course, we should raise this with the Chinese, uh, Chinese government the next time uh, they come to visit. Now, of course, the United States is a little bit beholden to China. They own uh, basically most of... You know, they own a lot of our banks, etc., so it's complicated, but this is something which is horrific. So, David, I, I thank you very much for bringing this to our attention, and if there's, is there any one specific thing that you'd recommend that people do in response to this? Well, I would say people should do something, whatever they can. Uh, 
write a letter to the editor, call their congressman, uh, send an email to the president, whatever. Is there one website that you, you would suggest people go to just to do something? I know there's an information website you mentioned, but is there one website people should go to to do something? My view is there's not just one thing that has to be done. I don't think there's a magic button that ha can be pressed that will end all this. I think people should do whatever they can. All right, well, my friends, uh, we'll be back with David uh, on another clip. Thank you.